everyone, welcome to the So Essential vlog. I'm Lucy and I'm here today to talk to you about my latest make. So a couple of things that I've made in the last month that I want to share with you. As always, the patterns and the fabrics I've used are available on our website and you can find a link to our website and the patterns and the fabrics I mentioned below. So this month was a bit of a funny month because um, I went on holiday at the end of October and then we got home, we landed in the early hours of a Monday morning which was really horrible because it was sort of full on back into normal life um, that week and it was just crazy and I hadn't sewn for two weeks on holiday and then I was just shattered that first week back so although I was dying to get sewing again I just didn't have the energy for it so I left it and then I decided what I was going to make and I decided to make this dress. So I'll just quickly show you the dress. It is all the 70s sort of flower power, uh, flared sleeved beauty that I was hoping for. I'm absolutely in love with this dress. I'll show you a, a little bit more and talk a bit more about it. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I thought I'd share this with you because I'm sure lots of other people go through this. It was one of those projects where I sort of decided what I wanted to make. I knew the minute we got this fabric I wanted to make something with it because I just loved it. I thought it was beautiful and then I found the pattern, got my heart set on it, got all these ideas in my head of what it was going to look like and then I started making it and I don't know whether it's because I hadn't made anything for a few weeks but I just started having this massive wobble of confidence as I got into the project and I sometimes get this and I've seen it in a meme as well that you kind of start off and you think this is going to be great and then you go oh I'm not sure if it is actually oh god this is rubbish oh god I don't think I like it and then you come out the other side and go oh actually I do oh this is amazing and it's just this massive sort of weird roller coaster of like oh, am I gonna like it too oh I love it um, and it was just definitely one of those projects and I thought I'd share that with you because I'm sure lots of us go through that and it's horrible when you're in those moments of like oh god I'm spending all this time on this and what if I don't even like it in the end but I often find that I have those wobbles of confidence but if I stick with it and get to the end then I do end up loving it and that is definitely what happened with this dress so as I say it's full-on 70s theme I'm going to a 70th birthday party at the weekend so there isn't a dress up theme or anything but um i thought it was quite funny that i'm going to be wearing something that feels so 70s to a 70th birthday rock and roll that's my uh social life right there but um i'm really in love with this dress i love the floral um design on the fabric i deliberately placed the smaller flowers on the bodice because i thought for a start I didn't want to end up with a big flower on either of my boobs or both of my boobs worst case scenario so I decided to place carefully with that and then more by luck than judgment I ended up with this lovely scattering of big flowers down one sleeve and then it goes onto the skirt on that side as well um, so that was really lucky and then obviously there's some nice big flowers on the back as well but that's just really what I love about this fabric it's the fact that there's some quite plain sections of it and then pow like big um flowers scattered about um the other thing i should say about this dress as well it's a butterick pattern i'll tell you all about the pattern in a minute i just wanted to wax lyrical about the fabric and the design um it has a zip at the side here so that was great for this sort of fabric where i really wanted to show off those beautiful big flowers um you know you haven't got a zip breaking it up down the middle and spoiling it on the back um so that was a plus point as well that it had a little side zip um i'm not going to lie the fabric was quite difficult to press that's the only sticking point with it i did find it it was one of those fabrics that just doesn't want to press um that well but you know i stuck with it i used my silk organza pressing cloth you can get those on our website um and just took my time and made sure i pressed it you know as well as i could and actually i'm really really pleased with how it's all ended up i feel really good in this dress i feel really feminine i'll just show you the length of it actually as well um so it is basically knee length um on me i'm five foot six 
and um, yeah it's just sort of like a flared skirt I would say like a, almost like a liney flared skirt um, so yeah so that's that's the dress it's got this little keyhole here which is fastened with a hook and eye behind it so that you can get the dress up on and over your head I think I've mentioned the flared sleeves I'm just a massive lover I love all the sleeve variations that are out there at the moment so yeah I'm really um, pleased with it oh and I should mention it's got princess seams at the front as well so that enables you to get a really good fit across here um, so yeah fantastic pattern love the fabric really really pleased cannot wait to wear this at the weekend um, so the pattern is Butterick 6481 so there's a few different variations on this and this is a pattern I hadn't come across before um, and actually when I googled it hardly anybody's made it but there was just one woman who'd made it her version looked beautiful it was on her blog but I couldn't find anywhere to read anything about it all I could see was the photo um, but yeah it was enough to make me think oh god that is a gorgeous design I love it so I made view A which as I mentioned has got the little keyhole at the front they suggest doing a contrast um, front piece because you've got the princess seams they suggested doing the front piece here in a contrasting fabric but I just decided to do it all in the same one and like I said earlier use the bits with the small flowers on for that and then you've got the big flowers elsewhere um, it's got this waistband here and um, and then it's fastened with an invisible zip down the side and then as I said the keyholes fastened with a little hook and eye um, so yeah I mean the, there are different variations as well there's midi length variations there's different sleeve variations so you can have quite a bit of fun with this pattern um, I just think it's a really nice I thought it was quite in keeping with the sort of um, peasant dress prairie sort of vibe that's very much in fashion at the moment I love the 70s anyway it's my favorite fashion era um, and it just felt like a nice dress to feel really dressed well feel yeah feel really dressed up but without feeling you know super formal like you know exposing like my arms and all that sort of thing that you would in like a proper evening gown so I thought it ticked that box really well and they're the sorts of things that I need really for going out you know it's very rare that I'm going to a, an event that's like posh enough or formal enough to wear a proper evening wear so something like this sits nice and in between and it's ideal for things like um, I met up with my friends last weekend it's rare that I do it but we met up on a Saturday afternoon went to a bar had a few drinks and you know those situations where you kind of want to feel dressed up but you don't want to feel really overdressed I thought it was ideal for that so that's why I chose this design um, the sizing on it normally on the big four patterns I would wear a size I would use a size 10 on the body so and grade to a 12 um, but with this one I decided to cut out a 12 and grade to a 14 and I can't really remember why I did that I think it was because the size 10 the bus was 32 and a half inches and my bust is 33 and a half and then the waist was 25 well my waist is 28 and a half so that was never going to work and then my hips are 38 and the hips were a 34 and a half on the 10 um, so I knew the 12 would be a better fit because the bust was a 34 I'm a 33 and a half inch bust um, but again the hips the waist was supposed to be 26 and a half and the hips were supposed to be 36 so they were still a good couple of inches shy of um, my body measurement so I initially started out by grading from a 12 on the top to a 14 on the bottom and then actually the 14 was really really big there was loads and loads of ease I could have looked at the finished garment measurements I suppose but I just wanted to get on and make it so in the end what I ended up doing was go doing a straight size 12 all the way down and I think actually when I look at the dress it isn't that fitted around the waist at all there is actually quite a lot of room there um, but the way it hangs and falls I'm quite happy with I think you know possibly I could have gone a, maybe a size smaller um, but then I think that would spoil the overall look of the dress and I, I am I am really pleased I'm glad I'm pleased with the fit of the size 12 
Um, I did make some adjustments to it, but they're just my normal fitting adjustments. So I've got a high round back and forward shoulders, so I'm just sort of hunched a bit at the back really. Um, so there's a couple of alterations I make to fix that problem. They're all detailed on our blog. You can find a link to our blog below. Made those standard adjustments that I always make. And then the only other thing I did was, uh, I was a bit worried about how the bust would fit because obviously it was slightly bigger than what my bust is. Um, but actually the fit turned out really well. But what I did find was um, I was getting the, some annoying creases here, which drag lines, which I often find under there. And I now understand that that is usually when um, there's too much excess fabric here because I'm hunched on the back. I'm quite broad around the back and then I'm quite narrow at the front there. Um, so all I did was I just um, took some out of the armhole seam. So I just sort of moved the seam line slightly. Um, and just tapered it to take take a bit of that excess off there and I also found that when I added the hook and eye as well that made everything sit nice and flat so um, but yeah just tapering those armholes a little bit there it's a useful tip to try if you if you have got a high round back which is quite a common problem and you find that you get excess there and you get drag lines here sometimes just taking some out of that armhole there um, works really nicely and the good thing is I often find that commercial patterns actually fit me really well on the back of the armhole they're nice and they're wide enough to come to the right place there um, whereas I often struggle with indie patterns that they're just too scant round around that area so that's one of the reasons why I love the big four um, yeah so all in all, um, fantastic make, a nice easy pattern. I would recommend this pattern to um, someone who's a beginner but sort of stretching their sewing skills because you've got to do princess seams, so you're sewing a curved princess seam on the bodice. Um, there's an invisible zip to put in, um, but other than that, you know, it really is pretty easy. Um, the bodice as well, I should just mention the front panel here all of that is interfaced um sorry it's not interfaced there's an interfaced facing that matches the front panel so you you've got two pieces you've got the front panel and then you've got um that replicated and you put interfacing on it to create a facing so that finishes the front neckline here and the keyhole um, and then it was a bit weird because th there's a facing that goes round the back neckline um, to finish the back to finish the back neckline off, and I felt that the instructions were a little bit confusing because they led me to believe um, they didn't le leave me to believe that um, you needed to leave a bit of overhang on the back neck facing so that you could finish it all in line with the front facing. Um, they suggested easing the shoulder seams, um, so. That made me think I needed to make the front shoulder piece and the back shoulder piece match in a length across there but actually um, you didn't you needed the back shoulder piece um, to overhang where your finished edge of the front bodice was so that you could then apply a facing to the back sh to the back piece if that makes sense I hope it does it's hard to explain I have taken some photos I did put a photo on Instagram as well if you wanted to have a look with so essential UK on Instagram you can find us on there um, so that was only the one thing that I thought was a little bit misleading about the instructions um, but as I say other than that a really fun easy so I mean the sleeves were lovely and easy um, you know they're just it's just a simple now narrow hem there um, so yeah I think really highly recommend this pattern I cannot wait to wear it on Saturday night as I said so the other thing I made this month which I am also absolutely thrilled with it's been a really good month this month for me so I'm feeling so like enthused and excited um, is the Fraser sweatshirt by Sewaholic Patterns in our gorgeous fleecy sweatshirt fabric and um, I used our ribbing fabric as well so I'll talk to you all about that but um, yeah I am just absolutely in love with this I'm wearing it to work today I know I'm going to be wearing it all winter long I'm just really really chuffed with it it's just my kind of thing um, really pleased with the fit really pleased with the colors really pleased with the finish I just think it looks lovely and professional um, it hardly took me any time to make at all um, so with as with everything the fabrics and the 
pattern a link below you can find everything on our site um but yeah this was just an absolutely awesome make i just want to make more now because um it was just so good so as i say it's the sewaholic fraser sweatshirt so there's different variations you can make the one with the um sort of sweetheart sort of no sh line on it that i've made um which i thought actually is really quite flattering for me because i've got quite a small bust as well so it's quite flattering in that way and i think a lot of the sewaholic patterns do think about that because they are designed for people who are pear shaped so smaller on top and bigger on the bottom um, there's also just a plain sweatshirt and then there's also an option for like one with a little collar on it as well um, so I chose to make a size 8 in the end so again I was sitting between sizes here because the size 6 was for a 33 inch burst and the size 8 was for a 34 and a half inch burst now I'm a 33 and a half so I was really torn I really didn't know which way to go with this because I do like things to be fairly fitted um, but then you know it's a sweatshirt I want to be able to feel really comfortable in it I don't want to feel restricted um, I'm going to be wearing t-shirts and layers underneath in the winter um, so in the end I decided to go for a size 8 because the size 8 waist measurement matched mine perfectly even though it's a sweatshirt and it's going to be loose around the waist you know you don't want too much excess fabric there or too little so it fit me bang on the measurements sat bang on the size 8 for the waist but then the hip was a lot bigger than mine because as I said they're designed for pear shapes so the hip was a 40 and a half inch um, hip for the size 8 now I'm only a 38 inch hip um, I'm quite sort of straight up and down really so um, that was a size 4 so I didn't want to grade from an 8 to a 4 because I thought that's probably a bit extreme and might look a bit it might make the hang of it a bit strange and make it look a bit weird so I just graded to a size 6 at the hips so I just found um, um, I held the pattern piece up against my body, marked where my natural waistline was and then from that point down on the front and the back um, pattern pieces I just drew a line that gradually tapered between the size 8 down to the size 6 and what I tend to do is I do it on one piece first and then I put that piece the front piece for example underneath the back piece so then I could trace exactly the same line onto the back piece so that it all matches up nicely when I'm making it um, and actually I'm really glad I chose the size 8 because I think you know it feels like a nicely fitted sweatshirt um but i think the six might have been a little bit too tight for me or not exactly the look i would have wanted so i'm really glad that i did choose to make the slightly bigger size um one of the other sizing things i should mention as well that i was really surprised about um i was just putting the cuffs and the hem on this last night and just before I sewed the cuffs on I thought do you know what I better just check how long the sleeves are because I have got really long arms um, and sometimes things are just a bit too short and I was very pleasantly surprised that actually the sleeves are lovely and long there were no issues there at all for me um, so yeah so if you've got shorter arms you might want to just check that because I think these sleeves are probably fairly long on this um, so yeah it was a really quick easy make I started cutting it out at 11 o'clock in the morning spent a couple of hours on it um, picked it up again in the evening and by the end of the second evening you know I'd basically finished it it was just last night I had to just add the cuffs and the hem band um, it all comes together really quickly really easily I made most of it on my overlocker some of the steps like um, putting the sleeves in you, you insert the sleeves on the flat so you don't create your armhole and then set your sleeve in you actually just pin your sleeve to um, the, sh the armhole area on the flat and, and then sew it like you would a t-shirt um, and then you sew the seam that goes under the arm and down the sides um, all in one so it's nice and easy but I just wanted to make sure because as usual I'd made my high round back and forward shoulder adjustment I just wanted to make sure the sleeve went in okay um, so I did just base that in on the first one just to check it out and it was absolutely fine it went in beautifully um, I had to try and match up the sleeve you've got these cute little yokes on the sleeves which I absolutely love and I had to just try and 
match those up with the front there, um, which I did fairly successfully. If you look very closely, they're very slightly off because when making it on the overlocker, sometimes I just find it hard with that bulky seam to just get everything to stay in exactly the right place. Um, but hey, they're under my arms anyway. You can't see it and it's so minimal, you wouldn't notice. Um, but all in all, just an absolutely fantastic project. Great, quick, satisfying. So you can make the whole thing on a sewing machine if you haven't got an overlocker. That's just my preference to make it on the overlocker. Um, but yeah, you know, just a few hours and you can have a lovely, warm, snuggly sweatshirt that I think looks really stylish and a little bit different. Um, and I know I'm gonna be wearing mine all winter long. So I made it in this um, like heathered purple sweatshirt fabric, which is fleece line. So just show you there, it's got this super soft, gorgeous fleece on the back. And then the gray bit up here was the, it's a brilliant scrap busting um pattern as well because these gray bits were just I just used some tiny little scraps I didn't have much left from my hoods and pants that I made um to create the yokes and that worked really well and then I used our ribbing fabric for the neckband the hem and the cuffs and I just wanted to show you this because not everyone knows what this is but this is ribbing fabric so we're selling it on the roll it's tubular like the um the grey sweatshirt fabric is tubular as well. So what that means is it comes like this. So it's um, it's already in, in a sort of tube like so. So all you do with this, you could just buy half a metre and all you do is you just treat, you can just treat one of the ends of it as a fold because the fabric's obviously on a double layer. So if you've got any pattern pieces that need to be cut on the fold, like the hem banded for this, you can just line them up on there and cut that out. If you've got any pattern pieces that you just need to cut too, just lie them anywhere on the fabric. Obviously make sure your straight of grain is lined up, but cut those out. Um, and it's probably a much more economical way of um, using this sort of fabric to get that really professional finish because you can buy little packets with the ready-made cuffs but I think you'd probably find it would be more expensive to do it this way than to just buy um, half a metre of this and then I've still got some left over so I'll be able to use it for other projects as well and it just gives a really professional finish it's um it's the sort of stuff that you will find on the sweatshirts that you buy from the shop you know it's that um like stretchy ribbing fabric that you just find on the hems and the cuffs and the necklines of um, fabric uh, jumpers sweatshirts that you'll see in the shop so yeah absolutely thrilled with this one did actually cross my mind momentarily like oh I could make some of these for Christmas presents for my sister-in-law but you know I'm just too much of a selfish Sarah for that so it probably won't ever happen um but yeah so that's all I needed to say you can get the patterns and the fabrics of both the things I've made this month as I mentioned and lots more fantastic patterns and fabrics on our website the link to our website is below we also put the link to our blog below where I do tutorials about some of the things I've taught you about on here there's a fantastic invisible zip tutorial actually that I used to put the invisible zip in that dress um so I'll try and remember to put a link to that in there um, but yeah you'll find all the information you need in the links below I hope you've enjoyed it I've had a fab month so got lots and lots of exciting projects for this month ahead as well so I can't wait to share those with you next time and if you like what you see please like and subscribe